Okay, so this lesson's about the inscribed circle of a triangle, which means we are working on the inside of a triangle, trying to find the center of a circle that touches all three sides of that triangle from the inside. This one's going to have several components to it, so you'll have to um, pause several times to make sure that you are keeping up. First off, to identify an inscribed circle, we want one that's entirely inside the triangle. So in this set of options, it would be number three. Number two is a circle on the outside, so that's going to be a circumscribed circle, but the inscribed circle is number three. So to find the center of an inscribed circle, what we want to do is construct angle bisectors. So that's what this is going to show you. Now I'm going to ask you to do this step by step with me as I explain the different steps. This is a finished construction, so I'm going to try to point out where the start was, where um, the intermediate steps are, and let you work through it at your own pace. So use that pause button to help you. All right, so first off, construct the angle bisectors of angle A and B. So from angle A, we need to make an arc that is, I'll, I'll actually highlight it here for you as well. So this arc here is the arc from A that is used to create the angle bisectors, and that's these out here. So you can pause and take a second to do that angle bisector, extend it all the way through side CB. All right, and then what we do from there is we have to, let me just get these markings off for you so it's a little bit less cluttered. So then we have to go and bisect angle B, and so that's this arc here. And so these two arcs will be um, the angle bisector arcs that run from B all the way through the diagram through segment AC. All right, so all that is taken care of. We've got both of our angle bisectors. They cross at point M. That's their intersection point. And so now we have to explain why is M equidistant from all three sides of this triangle. So if you look at um, the fact that it's an angle bisector on angle A, that means that point M falls equal distances from AC and AB. That's been our definition of an angle bisector. Remember, it collects all the points that are equidistant from the two rays of the angle. Okay, so it's definitely equidistant from AC and AB. But because it also lies on the angle B bisector, it would be equidistant from its rays too. So that's um, equidistant from both BD and, I'm um, sorry, BA and BC. So it must be equidistant from all three sides of this triangle. All right, so the next step is to construct a line through M that is perpendicular to AB and mark the intersection of that line with AB as point D. Okay, so then if I have to go through perpendicular to AB through point M, recall a couple lessons ago we did that construction, You because point M is not centered above AB, we have to create a segment that is centered below point M. And so if I lay my compass down on point M and make an arc that runs through just highlight this for you, make an arc that runs through line AB. As long as it touches both, uh, it touches the line twice, it can be used as a bisector segment. So now I'm essentially bisecting the segment that those two arc markings caused. And that's what this segment right here is. So it runs through M and it's, uh, it's centered at um, below point M. All right, next thing. So explain why the length of dm represents the radius of the inscribed circle. So dm is the shortest distance from m to side ab because the shortest distance is always a perpendicular. So we have that established. Then we look at um, the fact that point m is also the same distance to ac and to bc. Therefore, we know it's a radius in all directions and it will create an inscribed circle. So we finish this construction by setting our compass from point m to where the perpendicular line below point M hit side AB, otherwise known as D. So this is my radius here, and I use that radius, sorry for the wavy line, I use that radius to go around and hopefully touch all three sides of that triangle from the inside. Again, like the previous constructions, it will be close, it may not be perfect, but which what we try to get close as close to that as we possibly can. All right, so that's how we make an inscribed circle. We bisect two angles, locate the intersection. From that intersection, we drop a perpendicular by creating a segment to bisect. Then we set the compass to that segment and we make an inscribed circle. All right, so on the next page, the construction of the inscribed circle is 
um, a combination of different facts and techniques, and we have those those listed here. So with just a compass, we're able to draw arcs and a straight edge at, to draw line segments, and we can locate the center of that inscribed circle. So here's what happens. The construction steps, well, first off, the problem. For triangle DEF, construct the circle inscribed by the triangle. Leave all the construction marks and label the center point C. So we're starting with just a triangle. Again, a completed construction here, so I'm going to walk you through the steps. Step number one was to construct angle bisectors of, ang of angles D and F. So at this point, it makes sense for you to pause your video and bisect angles D and F. All right, if you have those angle bisectors drawn, you can then mark the intersection of those bisectors. And we have um, a point that we can work off of for the center of our inscribed circle. So, next step is to construct the perpendicular line from that center point to side DE. So, this point is the center of our circle, but we need to know the radius. So, we need to be able to figure out where it's supposed to hit segment DE. So, again, at this point, you should pause your video and make a bisector that runs through line DE and through point C. The first step to that would be to make your arc from place your metal point on C and make your arc that touches the line twice. So, we'll have this and then we'll drop the bisector. All right, once again, we have our bisector drawn, and now AC will serve as your radius, and we'll take that circle and we'll go around and try to touch the inside of the triangle in all directions. Then we know we have an inscribed circle. All right, last exercise, and I'll try to keep this one quick. Given the isosceles triangle below, with EF and EG equal, do the following. Okay, first construct the inscribed circle and label its center point H. So we can bisect any two, we can bisect any two angles to form the inscribed circle center. But if you have an isosceles triangle, you are gonna to want to bisect the vertex angle. And the reason for that is the vertex angle bisector will also be perpendicular to the opposite side and that's only in isosceles triangles. So use that to your advantage, bisect one of the angles, and then take the other bisector to one of the angles that's not equal to the first one that you did. In other words, one vertex angle, one base angle. Then once those angle bisectors are done and you found the intersection point, you automatically have your perpendicular already. So now I'm just gonna use point HK as my, um, not only my angle bisector, but as my radius of my inscribed circle. And I can make that go around this way, and I have it. So describe a rigid body transformation that could be used to justify that IJK is isosceles. So because I have line HK running this way, I could do a reflection of IJK across that line. K would map onto itself because it's on the line. J would map onto I. And this, because they're distance preserving, we would have segment KI and segment KJ be the same length. So that's the rigid transformation that does that.